Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my.
I need a better transition than that. So much for smooth. Shalom and shalom. Welcome to the Code Searcher. I'm back, you guys. Tried to post a video the other day. Was no sound. So I hear again doing uh, another video. But this time I got Scott joining me today. He's going to share some codes as well. So um, welcome, my brother. To Thanks, the recording. Thanks for having me. It's been a minute. So it was you. You were the actually the one that called. I uploaded that video and went to sleep and then hear my phone ring. And then, then I, I didn't get up to answer. But when I finally got because it bothered me, I was like, who is calling? And I went and looked, <laughs> texted me, telling me Sorry the about that. volume was off. There was no there was no sound to it, which was kind of weird. Um, usually when something like that happens, I know the, the Holy Spirit is saying that you're not ready. There's something else I want you to share or somebody I want you to present codes with and and that's what i felt about it because you and i mean i was trying to get you with me before i did that video and uh you know because of scheduling and conflicts and stuff we couldn't get together till today <laughs> so yeah, yeah so here we are all right brother so share with us what are you what are you looking at i know you mentioned it was uh you know you're looking at some stuff about america um yeah um i had shared a few things on facebook and i i thought that in light of the recent um festivities that uh, it would be something um, uh, proper to look at. And um, there's uh, there's uh, a couple codes that come up uh, in the first appearances of, of the full spelling of America. And, um, you know, um, there's a lot that I could say concerning where they appear in the codes, um, but I certainly don't want to offend anybody, you know, who's either patriotic or what have you. Um, I will say that um, my heart does go out to the veterans who's who served and kind of look out at the the current landscape right now and and who are heartbroken for what they fought for. And um, we're gonna shed some light on on the um on that. It's not um, the America it was. Uh, we've been so so infil if, infiltrated and overrun mm -hmm. with the enemy. And everything's Masonic and cultic and yeah. right in your face and yada, yada, yada. It's wickedness right now. So it's not the same America as, as you know, right. you would, would, would think, right? Right. Right. And um, there's uh, there's judgment for that. And I really believe that it's already began and uh, it's going to pick up. But um if you'd like, I can go ahead and, and Absolutely. share. Absolutely. I think I've got it set to where you can share screen. And I'm going to okay. call the light here because it's a little bit dark on uh, on me. So uh, you just go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Are we on screen? Yeah. Yeah. We can actually see. Uh, We're on screen. Yep. Very okay. small skip. Yeah, this is at a skip of 17, and this is the very first appearance of the full spelling of America. And um, it appears in Daniel chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, and I'll, I'll go ahead and read that. 
Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, and the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried out, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, all kinds of music, that ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So I, in, in light of where this appears, you know, I'd really like for people to think about that. Um, why would it appear in such a place? And it's really fitting, considering what just happened back in 2020 with um, the uh, the pandemic. And, and you know, I've I've heard. Oh, uh, uh, who was that doctor? Um, doctor, the recent doctor that just passed away. Um, you talking about butter? No, uh, Dr. Um, Z, uh, what was his last name? Zelenko? Zelensky? Uh, no, not Zelensky. Uh, uh, who are you talking about? The guy that, that cured cancer? No, 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 no. Lots of doctors died, bro. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally <laughs> hundreds true. of doctors. So yeah. That is true. Um, anyways, um, he was a Jewish man, and um, he, he, um, he was... Um, doing an interview once and he asked a, a, a question you know uh, who are you going to bow down to Belshazzar Nebuchadnezzar or or the most high and people were made to bow down to what they were doing and um, this is very uh, this is very fitting very proper um, and also when you consider um, you know the pledge of allegiance you know, pledging your allegiance to the system, you know, instead of the, instead of the Torah. Um, so I, I, uh, I was really taken back when I saw this. Um, I've also worked this into a table. And there's some really interesting terms that come up. Um, this is the same code. And, um, you have the affliction of the eagle, but if you just if you just consider that the word eagle is right here, it's stacked right on top of the word image, and you know America is uh, has the image of the eagle. I mean, that's that's you know the national mascot, if you will, and uh, the words of the earth as a branch of arms. And that's what the eagle is holding in his in his claws, um, in that image. Um, from Mammon, and it's this image is printed on the Mammon. So, I thought this was really interesting. Very fascinating, brother. There's a very tight cluster in a small yeah. area, and there's structure to that. There, that's not just there by accident. And those those letters didn't fall there by accident. So, right. Uh, yeah. Um. So continuing, we'll go on to the next one. I have a handful here, so we'll just kind of go through these and okay, and just kind of expound our thoughts a little bit. Uh, we have one here at a skip of thirty-seven in Nahum, and um. This is contained within verses, uh, chapters uh, 2, 13 through chapters 3, verse 3. And we'll go ahead and, and read those. Um, the lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps and strangled for his lioness and filled his holes with prey and his dens with raven. Behold, I am against thee, says Yahuwah. And I will burn her chariots in the smoke, and the sword shall devour the young lions, and I will cut off thy prey from the earth, and the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard. Woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip, the noise of 
the rattling of the wheels and prancing horses and the jumping chariots. Horseman lifteth, lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multiple multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses, and there is none, no end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. That's pretty deep, um, you know, for a warring country. Um, that's that's kind of proper. And uh, in this table, we have the year uh, 2020. And up here, we have this term, Summer of Fire. And um, I thought that was pretty amazing, considering in 2020, we had over 10 million of acres of uh, of uh, fires. Yeah. Yeah. In California and in Colorado, a total of 10 million or so um, acres burned. Um, Man, and uh, would you care to expound on, on any of this, brother? Well, I saw the same thing. Um, it's it's def, you know, and I've been seeing this for a while. People don't like to talk about it, and I get it. Where people are very yeah. patriotic, and and they think yeah. Trump's going to come and save us. But the fact is, all the evidence is pointing to. If you look at the, the landscape now, America's not in a good position. We've got a terrible president. Things are not looking good. There's definitely judgment. And if and if Trump does come back, and I've been the one to say that I can't find anything about him coming back in the text that I'm looking at, but some co-churchers say that it's in the Peshitta that he may have a second term. If he does, I don't see things getting better for America. I think things will get worse, especially after 2024. Yeah. You, you know, I saw you posted some stuff about the eclipse the other day. Yeah. And that's a marked off period of time where Yahuwah is, he's telling us something here. And it's just like the blood moons, the years previous to that, where we had them uh, in succession. America's headed for judgment. And, you know, we can't dance around that, 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 that subject. Uh, we just do right. not see this country coming to save the day in, in end times prophecy, nowhere in the text. Um, and so, America is suspiciously missing, and I, I, I believe it's because of like what we've seen in some of these codes. Like one for in, for instance, the Yellowstone Code, um, where it talks about that the nations from afar will see this this country with America attached to it burning from a distance, and they cry out, "What brought on this fury, this this wrath from the Creator?" Well, I'll tell you, you know, America leads the world. And Israel, the state, is right behind it at number two in pornography yeah. and abortions and a list of other atrocities against the Most High. So we're going to be an example to the world. And, and you know, yeah. of course, there's a lot of remnant here. I'm not say, telling you that to be fearful. The remnant are going to be just fine. Right. But the leadership and, and, you know, this American government is going to be judged. Um, and, and I can even take it all the way back to World War II when we dropped two nuclear bombs on a, a non-military target in Japan. Yahuwah has stayed his hand for a long time, but judgment will come on that. I can find in the codes in several places, you guys, where in case there's going to be at least two attack two detonations inside the united states at some point this is me not connecting me dies it's a basic biblical concept measure for measure and um that's judgment that is judgment but not at the, at the same time there's going to be things going on in the heavens and to the world as a whole for for the wickedness and so it won't just be america being judged it'll be canada too other countries also suffering um, at the same time. But here's the thing. We know the remnant endure. We know the remnant endure through this. And so don't be fearful. So that's my expounding on this. I, I you know, this is a very, um, I wouldn't say basic code, but it's, it's, it's fundamentally, it, there's, there's no um, extras in this. We're, we're basically seeing a, you know, symmetry in the text. Yeah. It's telling us a message that's 
not in the plain text. This is in the encoded text or in the encoded part of it that's being revealed. Interesting how you have the, the rest of the text blacked out. Most people may look at that and, be, and think, what is this? That's actually the text that's here. You just can't see yeah. the rest of, the, of the, what's standing out is what's important. And, and so yeah. how you've done that, it kind of, it's almost artistic in a way. I, yeah. At the time, I, uh, that's what my thoughts were. I just kind of wanted to stand out. Of course, because it's always better. You can get very clustered. Clustering happens, and I'm going to show a code about Nibiru here in just a few minutes, where it's in a very small area, like the code we just saw with uh, the skip of 17. And it's a lot of information in one spot dealing with that subject. And the plain text is speaking to the encoded text. So they're, they're both telling us something in that text. And I believe it's statistically, it's it's valid, it, so to speak, according to what the rabbis say is good methodology. Uh, it's, a, it's a remarkable code. Matter of fact, they themselves have looked at this very same code um, mm -hmm. that's found in Numbers 24. Anyway, you still got you got more on uh, America. What else you got? Yeah, I've, yeah, I do. I've got a few more. Um, the next few are going to be um, the truncated spellings of America, and what I mean by that is, um, you can actually drop this yod, right, and um, just have it with this alif mem resh kuf hey, and kind of shorten the spelling. Yeah, that's and, kind of um, common practice in in Hebrew. Uh, it's yeah. a, it's not, that's not not abnormal. The same thing can be done with vobs. They're implied, and uh, they are codes that actually Chris found. And I just figured I'd you know kind of give a shout out because they're really really impressive. Uh, where they shout out to Chris. The Chris is a good code searcher. Yeah, I don't agree with everything that he finds or his interpretations, but uh, right. he's definitely on point when, when finding codes. Yeah. Um, and in, in this circumstances, um, in this circumstance here, I'd have to agree um, wholeheartedly. Um, so uh, we have here, we have um, America's uh, appearing at a skip of four in um, the sixth chapter of Micah, verse 16. And it says, for the statutes of Omri are kept and all the works of the house of Ahab. And ye walk in their counsels that I should make thee a desolation and the inhabitants there, thereof and his sing, sing, huh? That's weird. Hissing, I'm sorry, hissing. And the inhabitants thereof, a, a hissing, therefore ye shall bear the reproach of my people. Sorry, I read that wrong. It's kind of space, kind of, kind of weird there. But, um, reason why this is significant is because you have the statutes of Omri and um, Omri was um, he was the father of Ahab I believe and he was um, an Assyrian king and this dynasty essentially came in and, and um, enslaved the northern tribes um, and assimilated them and um, I can only imagine that this, these statutes of Omri are draconian laws. Um, the same thing that we see taking place in certain areas of the country that are really kind of um, starting to overrun. We, we just see more and more oppressive laws and bills being passed. And uh, so this is... Um, this is a representation of that here, I believe. Right. And again, a very simplified code. That's what the word I should have said earlier, not yeah. simplified. Yes. yes. I mean, no big fancy tables to kind of uh, right. express what's going on. We don't need a lot of details. I, I do a lot of codes like this. Um, I'm sure there are certain things that I could look up, but I just kind of wanted to show the bare bones of, of what this is saying here. Absolutely, but there's there's always more that's, yeah, that's there that that's certainly. you know even if if you don't bring it out that it, it's still there in plain sight, many anomalies, many occurrences, and even the plain text that's probably speaking to what the the encoded is there. Absolutely, and um, continuing here, um, we have uh, we have the same spelling here at a perfect skip. And uh, you remember this one. You, uh, you guys actually did a broadcast. 
dog cast on this, um, the vanity of vanities and here in Ecclesiastes um, chapter one, verse two. And uh, I mean, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. You know, I mean, when you think about the ideals of people in this country anymore, they're just so caught up in, in vanity and, and looks and appearances and all right we um, live in the time of the selfie man i mean just think about yeah, that word yeah selfie selfish it's yes. all about me 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 and and you know social media and uh, yeah i could go on and on but you're uh, yeah it's vanity um, imagine imagine this the writer in today uh you know having a, a perception of today he'd be shocked it's all yes. about vanity. it's all about um Stepping on the next guy. Yeah. But what happens here? What does it say? In here in verse and verse two. Brother. Vanity of vanities, said the preachers. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. All is vanity. Yes. What profit the man that all of his labors that he had taken under the sun? One generation pass and another generation cometh, but the earth abided forever. The sun also rises and the sun goeth down and haste to his place where he arose. And the wind goeth toward the south and turneth into the north and uh, wideneth about continually. And the wind returneth again according to its circuits. And the rivers run into the sea and all the, and all the sea is not full unto the place of which the rivers come. Then they return again. So there's an order for all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you have remember so the former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. And you got America encoded there. So the, mm -hmm. you know that's um, I can't think of a more vain country. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, very impressive find. Uh, on Chris's part there. Uh, so that's Chris too? Very good. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, that's his. Um, so that's, that's pretty much what I have, just just these little handful of codes. Um, Was there anything interesting that you might want to bring up on the, on the eclipse, on the eclipses? Um, any connection to America? And yeah, um, because what I'm going to show in just a moment, and it, and it come about, I've had it for years, actually, and I've talked about it several times, which is uh, Namiru at a skip of 39 in the book of Numbers 24, one chapter. And it's about the star that came out of Jacob. It just so happens to be the very text that the rabbis cite this star called Nibiru. And for a long time, I didn't know where that name was coming from in the text and why it was there. I, I was, I suppose it was from the pagans. But it turned out it's actually Judah that's that's calling this star Nibiru, Planet X, um, Wormwood, what the Christians will call it. But yeah, here's here's a really interesting block of time of seven years. Yeah. Yeah, we've had the the first one. I think it's very significant. Um, in 2017, of August 21, which happened to be the first the first day below, um, which marks the 40. Day um, period of repentance leading up to Yom Kippur. Um, here we have. You know what um, that you know what that day was. It's significant to me and where I was. I remember it very that? clearly. I had just come across the Mojave Desert and you know from Utah to Los Angeles because I was the next day. The very next day is when we did August twenty second. Wow, twenty two is my number. <laughs> we wow. we went to Hawaii then. That's when we went. So wow. I was in California when the uh, the eclipse took place, and so it actually marked off a significant time in my life. And here we are coming to 2024 when it concludes with another one. And then things happening in the middle part of it that we've just kind of blown through. But um, I think it's a sign to the United States for sure that, that you, who is directly speaking. Yeah. Here's what happened the last time we saw this. This this thing happened, and I did a video in 2017 before I left Utah about this anomaly and, and what happened historically. And one thing I talked about was possibility of a pandemic. I said that in 2017, and lo and behold, it happened. 
And then World War III was the other thing. Yeah. That's what the world was engaged in 124 years ago, 120 years ago, was uh, a world war and a pandemic that's happened. Yes. Interesting. Um, and so I think it was telling us something here with this. And by the way, this this sign happened over Europe. It didn't happen over, but but the same thing, it crossed over right. the seven-year period. Yeah. There are other judgments that are associated um, with eclipses in the past, you know, and I, and I could really expound on this for hours. Actually, a good friend of mine has done a, a put together a really good presentation on this. Um, one thing I will say where, where these two ecliptic lines cross right here is right over the Trail of Tears. And that's something else that people really need to consider about why these judgments are coming is, and you know, wow. the, Look at where the other one crosses, brother. What's happening yeah. on the southern border right now? Oh yes, yep. That's very. That's, that's a very good point. With um, immigrants and and you know people coming across that shouldn't be coming across. That's interesting, but it also yeah. makes the uh it, it makes a couple of of Hebrew letters here. Yes, um, you have the Paleo Hebrew Olive, even though it's termed upright, going like this. And here yeah, it's, it's like it's like an A. It almost looks like an anarchy sign, right? But then yeah. here you have a Tav, and you have another Tav, two Tavs and an Aleph. And when you actually, it's kind of interesting because Aleph Tav Tav is the words for signs. And what uh, are the words from signs? Yeah, it's a derivative. Uh, oat. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So then you have yeah. another word called otiot, which means letters. And what are we looking at right here is, is letters. But what what does that word mean if you use it with the plural otiot? It means signs or signals. signals. Yeah. Yes. So the, the, the most high, just like he says in his word, is going to give us signals and indicators of, of what's going on, where we are prophetically in the word. And so that's how I interpret these things. And there, there's still others that we're, you know, we're looking to come. Um, and, it, and, it, and another indicator, because um, it wasn't really hard to figure out about the pandemic in World War III just by looking up the patterns. But the fact that people like Microsoft, God, I don't want to say names because I don't be worried about getting a strike, you know, with YouTube nowadays. But there are people who've done TED Talks that told us three years before C happened that it was going to happen, but they didn't call it C. They call it disease X. <laughs> okay. Right. Those same people are, are now saying there's probably going to be another one happen. Hmm. What? Okay. So we got that to look forward to. Um <laughs> They're telling us that it's going to happen again. Yeah. So plagues, and uh, you know, th these are all part of the signs. He says it's going to happen. Man-made, Yahuwah allowed it. The Bible doesn't specify how they come about. It just tells us it's going to happen. So, so what have you seen on this? What do you what are you anticipating when you, with you with the codes that you put? Um. Well. Like they say, history always repeats itself, and there's nothing new under the sun, according to what the Bible says. And right. anytime this has happened in history, you'll see things accompany eclipses like comets, other signs in the heavens, earthquakes, etc. They, they are um, these these um, these solar eclipses are considered to be portents of doom, um, and you know. It's it's kind of I, I think it's kind of ironic how they consider these things to be a, a spectacle and what do they do um, when these things come? They sell these sunglasses to people so that they can kind of look up at these things like in, in awe, you know, like in fascination, like it's like they making it like a, a movie event out of it or something. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's been considered by um, lots of cultures in the past if not most, if not all, that you're you're not even supposed to look at these things. Um, 
Right. Right. Well, you know, there, I think it's because they're just they they've always been considered to be ominous, ominous signs. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't I, the, the enemy will throw in a, a, a faint every once in a while through yeah. religious organizations. Um, yeah. I never bought that uh, because clearly the scriptures tell us that you created the sun, moon and stars to communicate for signs mm -hmm. and for seasons, for days and for years. So um, it's, it's part of his big clock. And he's telling us a story. Uh, along the way, um, the, the the ancient fathers knew this. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses—they all knew this. This was not uncommon for them to to understand the Maserat. Um, and right. by the way, Daniel was an expert at mm -hmm. all of this. And what was he? He was put above in Babylon. He was put above the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers. And so Daniel wasn't learning his craft from Babylon. Babylon was learning from this man who was, a, was appointed and blessed from, from Hebrew, from the, from the, the tribes, not the other way around. And some argue this is where Israel picked up bad habits. Daniel was teaching. Daniel ruled over the wise men in uh, Babylon. So um, this is how the wise men found Yeshua, right? When, when he was born, they followed the star. So, um, you know, we're commanded not to worship the stars. You know, it, it's, it's much like walking into a room and looking at the clock and knowing some information that might be critical, timing, uh, an event may be coming, right? It's the same thing. You are looking at a clock when you're observing the sun, moon, and stars, and it's telling you critical information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'll be posting a link of, of, of the presentation and uh, as as the uh, Ring of Fire Eclipse uh, draws closer this year we'll, we're really going to be pushing this this information out there because I mean we're not trying to scare anybody but we're just you know we're just trying to let people know that you really need to start preparing your hearts if you're already you know if you haven't already and, and like you said earlier if you're if you're one of the remnant then then um, you should be um, paying attention. Yeah, yeah. And well, and you should be because overdone. that's who he's speaking to, really. Yeah, but you should have joy knowing that um, the King is coming. Um, yeah, and, and also, that's right. Uh, that's also, right. Um, we uh, we're we're hoping that people will see this who. Uh, who don't believe and who aren't aware that will uh, see this and, and um, you know, wake up and and uh, turn their lives over um, as they should. So that's right. But that's, that's right. That's pretty much what I have for for now, brother. All right, stop share, yeah. and uh, I'll start going into what I was sharing the other day, two days ago, on uh, the video I tried to put out. Of course, like I said. Um, I was supposed to be turning on some light. Hold on. Like I said, um, I did the whole thing and didn't realize that what, there was no sound. And so um, I uploaded it, went and laid down, get a call from Scott and a message. And that's how I found out. So I didn't, I didn't bother to redo it. I just prayed about it. I looked at it as you know, it was saying it's not ready. And uh, anyway, here we are. So this particular code, I've shown several times. This You can find this on, on YouTube with the rabbis. They have posted on this. Of course, the access term is the long spelling of Nibiru in the very center. And this is in um, the book of Numbers at a, at a skip of of uh, 24. So it's a very small skip. One chapter, and it's in, in a skip of 39. Now, we can alter this, this cylinder. And I should have brought a prop. I got this little cylinder. Well, you can't see it. I, <laughs> I hate this thing. Anyway, imagine a cylinder. The scriptures are going around it in a double helix, 
round and around and around it, it, with with perfect order. We're not jumping letters here. We're looking at ELS code. That means equal letter distance skip. So all of these term, terms in here are at an equal letter distance skip, all in one place, clustered in this place. It just so happens to be a prophecy from Balaam. Uh, Balak was trying to get Balaam to curse Israel. And he actually didn't and, and at, at this point. And he actually prophesies about um, this people will do to thy people in the end of days. You know, I shall see him, but not now. A star shall come from Jacob, which I happen to believe is a reference from to the Maseroth personally. Um, because clearly we're talking about a Chachav, which is a moving star. Okay, Chachav, as you can see, that, that is in the plain text there. Right there in the blue. Chachav Miachav, which means star from Jacob. And crossing right over the term in the plain text is Krov which is a word that means to draw near or is, is, is getting close, right? If you look at it by itself, it's actually saying, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see in just a moment when we read the text, but right across the top of it is we have in the end of days, which is a, a benchmark in time. This is not in the time of Yeshua or any other time, but the end of days. Also happens to be the time when the, Re where the book of Revelation is unsealed and only then. I believe this event has a connection to Isaiah 24. Incidentally, you know, Numbers 24, Isaiah 24, speaking to the same thing, but also the book of Revelation in and around the chapter 8. And starting from there, when you start seeing objects that are coming from the throne of heaven and that are in fact in the earth. And what happens there is John is seeing He's seeing this event and he, he's he's translating it between the spiritual and put, between the physical. What he sees in the physical, excuse me, in the spiritual is different than what he sees in the physical. What we're going to see manifest. OK, so keep that in mind, because that's important when the Biru comes into play. You guys. What blotted out the sun for six hours? Was it six hours or three hours? Three hours. When Yeshua was crucified, it was a large object. I believe that this was was the the event that's cyclical. Is you know we see it several times in Scripture, with Noah, with uh, Joshua's long day, with Hezekiah, with the crucifixion, and so on. There's obviously an object that plays a role in the astro, and I know some people have a hard time reconciling that because of the way you believe the earth is shaped but i have to tell you the scriptures are indicating that there is a star whatever that means to you that is going to draw near and i believe it's it's part of the throne room and it's going to be an interaction with our solar system and with our planet and it's going to do what we see in isaiah 24 which turns the world upside down the inhabitants are cast to and fro and, and the earth uh, totters like a drunkard and so on right what is the cause of this is it the literal hand of the most high you know touching the earth and perturbing the earth and the whole soda or is it part of his creation i believe it is the latter so let's look a little further at this code before i take you to some scriptures that we're going to read uh that that i believe that we can attribute this anomaly that we see in numbers 24 which is a Again, a prophecy from Balak. And this is at a very, very small skip, 39. And I can tell you with the density of, of the terms here, based on the mathematics we see from, and I'm using as a baseline, the Isaiah 53 code, which is at a skip of 20. And it's about Yeshua. As a matter of fact, it says Yeshua is my name. And of course, the plain text is talking about the, the, the suffering that will happen with the Yeshua, with the crucifixion and the resurrection. But the underlying code there and all of the, the anomalies that follow, the crucifixion, the name of every single one of the disciples except for Judah. Four Marys are there. Pilate, Caiaphas, um, Rome, you, you know, dozens and dozens of terms that are there. Makes that code 
a statistical value of one in 600 billion, somewhere around that area. So if we take that as a baseline and we we apply it to what we're looking at here, we can make a, a an educated assumption that this is also high statistically, or the rabbis wouldn't be talking about it. In fact, they do. If you go over to Glazerson's channel and put in Nibiru, this code will pull up. You'll find this, and it's out of skip of 39. I'm going to show you what else is here. When we take this cylinder down to a small nine, we're going to see another anomaly here that's, that you see right now before your face in plain sight. That's, that's linear. Some of these anomalies that are here, like Oteot, that's here in the red, which means signs or signals. It also means letters. We're talking about codes. But also in the blue, we have an anomaly where we're actually spelling out codes of Yahuwah, starting with the Kuf in Yaakov, which is a term that's right here that you see in the blue, the dark blue is the letters. And when I change this to a nine, it'll be very apparent then. But you can see it's linear in the text. Codes of Yahuwah. Just drop down one more line and it says uh, the OTO or the signals, the signs. Who's it for? For the sons of Jacob. That's the tribes. The whole world's going to witness. As a matter of fact, America, especially, America is here, very small scale, running in reverse here. Right up, up top, the line that has twice the sun, the Shamash. Also, um, just scrolling down a little bit, I want to bring this into focus here. The occurrence of pandemic or plagues that appears twice in this, this text. Once here in the green, and right before that, we see Oh, well, it's, uh, it's actually the blurs, but they're scrambled. In the green is pandemic the first time. And then in the next line, we see it again in the blue. It's the very same letters. It's used twice. And in the second occurrence, we have a year connected to it, which is 2024. And it starts right here on this letter. Etal, Shin, Pei, connecting with pandemic. And here's the final letter. So if there is another one that happens i'm going to put myself out there and say it's probably going to be around 2024 at the time of the election that we'll see possibly another um i'm trying to spread anything but what we're finding in the codes we will see what, what takes place i don't want to get myself in trouble here with uh, violating any kind of rules um the other day when we were in uh, Shabbat and one of the brothers there Jacob asked or was talking to me about the constellation Orion and how there's a lot of people that's looking at this constellation because there's this void spot that when you, you can even see it on a um, telescope where it's kind of like it's dark you don't see stars behind it you can't see, pierce it but it's very large right so I went and looked to see if Orion is here, and indeed it is. It's at a very interesting skip, uh, as we can see in these purple letters, the first three letters, or, and because it's on a certain skip, we're going to see the word slanted like this. It's going to come up on one side and then on the other side of the anomaly. Okay. We'll see, when I put this code on on this skip of this word we'll see it vertically in here but right now it looks like two slants here's the other letters up at the top on the other side of the word nabiru is these purple letters here that spells out orion okay um wormwood is also here and white mount graham mount graham is also here it's up above in the yellow here and is in close proximity. This was interesting because it was on my mind and I actually saw something about the hidden day concerning Shaba Oak. And then there's a connection to the day of distress. Um, 
this is definitely going to be a stressful event in part and connected to the day of distress. So I happen to look and sure enough, Shavuot is in here. So it starts with the, sh the Shin right here and the rest of the word is here. Um, so now what I want to do with this is I want to switch it a little bit to switch the cylinder so we can see the other anomalies clearly that comes up here. First is going to be a skip of nine. So we're going to... Uh, Is it gonna let me do it? Oh, it's on this one. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm trying to do it on the uh, on the wrong one. I got two computers on. All right, so we made that cylinder a nine, and what we see is all the all the linear letters are now vertical. So we because we've made this smaller um, cylinder, but it is exactly the same text. It just so happens to be another code that was found simultaneously when the when the rabbis was talking about Nibiru, myself and some of my students, and I think it was um, Anne that was working on this code where we had found codes of Yehua in the very same line we found Oteo, which is um, this anomaly here. The signals or the letters connecting with the word nations, the goyim, and then right under that codes of Yehua and Yaakov crossing that. And then right over in the other column over here, we have Hebrews, the Ebrit, and um, we've got Bet Zerah that is also here, Bet Zerah, which is in the time of distress, all in this code. Um, we can take it to a 163, and you can see how um, we can we can change the, uh, the cylinder width again to a 163, and you can see the word Orion appear. Uh, I got things things in the way on my computer screen here. Hold on. As you can see there vertically, now at a skip of 163, we have Orion, which makes all the other terms now linear in the text, everything that we see. And then I think uh, one of the final terms that I found was at a skip of 72. Let's see what appears at a 72. Sons of light. The sons of light appears vertically, connecting to the word Karov, which is drawing near. Sons of light drawing near, and Shavuot is right there. Happens to be the time, I believe, the very first one, and, and I've been talking about this in some of my videos about the calendar, where the very first one was defiled. There's no question about that. We can see that with the timing of, of Moses coming down the mountain with the two tablets. It was Shavuot. Aaron declared it a day of feasting. And Yehul wanted to kill the people because they had defiled the day. That comes up to exactly 102 days from the time we were supposed to count from Passover to that particular day. I'm not going to go into it, but that's how Shavuot works into this. You guys have seen the videos. Okay, so I'm looking at this from all different angles to see how it plays a role. It's really interesting to me that Shavuot comes up with the sons of light because what happened in the upper room? He who have poured out his spirit. Now, he says in Joel, he's going to do this with all flesh. But when you look at that in the Hebrew and in the context, He's not talking about all flesh of the earth. He's talking about all flesh of the, the, the tribes. Okay, so the Hebrews is who he's going to pour out. His, this is not all flesh on the earth. <laughs> I know some people believe that, and Christians like to shout that. But it's actually for Judah and Ephraim is who that's for. He's going to pour out his spirit upon those, right? This is why the rest of the world is going to grab the arm of a Jew. Imagine that. Why are they doing that? Because they're going to see the blessing that's poured out. 
speaking in new tongues and raising the dead. Yeshua said it's going to be greater than what I did. That's when we know it's 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 happened is when we start seeing signs and wonders like that. And it's only going to happen when Yeshua brings us into unity, by the way, on the calendar. Because it clearly says that in the they were in the upper room in one mind and one accord. They weren't divided on how the shape of the earth was, on how the calendar is observed. They were in one mind and one accord, and they understood. And you will pour out his spirit. Now, when that happens, I believe it's a great day, and I believe it sustains um, the Hebrews. It may even be what sustains us through all of this um, trauma that's coming to the earth. Because the fact of the matter is, you guys, he was going to judge this world. And we can see it's waxing wicked, more wicked every day, every year. Even this country, which is supposed to be a beacon of light for the rest of the world, is becoming darkness. This is why we're finding codes like this. And this is not this is not the only one. And I don't mean to scare anybody. You guys, this is just confirmation that what we see in the text is, is true. There's a there's a reason for it. Go read Isaiah 24 if you don't know what I'm talking about. Go read you know Revelation 8 if you don't know what I'm talking about, and a couple other places that the prophets speak of. So that is one that I was recently looking at here because of my friend Jacob had brought it up. It was part of the Parsha. Um, what we looking at, but uh, a couple of the other ones that I'm looking at, like um, here's one on the Messiah. So let me share screen. This is called He is Revealed. Dealing with the Mashiach. I happen to believe that that he is the fulfillment of the, each one of the feasts, and he's one that's going to reconcile us. So uh, he is revealed. We can see the Mashiach is connected to that code on the bottom. Um, in the plain text, it just so happens to be in the, the law where this is. He is revealed where? He's revealed in, in, in the law, in the, particularly in Leviticus. Why? He said the whole of, this, of the word testifies unto me. And so if he came as the lamb, right, we're going to see that in the text. And we happen to see that dealing with Passover and around the the Moedim of the new year, which is a beef, we've got a Mashiach that's connected to that. That's right at, at the time that Yeshua was crucified. This is the, the Hebrews in the plain text, uh, in the time of the harvest, and we'll go and read uh, that text in a, in a moment, but I got the word Shavuot here. Again, looking at the different angles of Yeshua fulfilling these feasts. Yeshua's name, Yahshua, here and over here, also known as Joshua in the English. This is not Jesus. Like the Catholics say, you guys, we got to get away from that. His name has meaning. So let's look at uh, the text there. Interesting that he is, he is revealed, has to do with the law to the Hebrews, and in this particular verse here, we are looking at um, what it says concerning the harvest. Let me just read this. The harvest festival. 3421, let's start there. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In earing time and in harvest that thou shalt rest. Thou shalt observe the feast of weeks but to Shavuot, of the first fruits of the wheat harvest and of the feast of the end gathering at the year's end. Okay, so this is really important because this is a hidden day. Make no mistake about it. We get from the Jews counting the Omer, which gives you only 50, and it does not give you the complete count, guys. I've shown conclusively that this is connected to the growth cycle of wheat. And to have an end gathering feast you have to have some wheat to harvest. And not only that, we know from Acts 2 that they were accused of being drunk on new wine. And there can only be new wine in the summer. And in a particular time of the summer, seven-day period where new wine exists, puts it clearly in the summer more than 50 days. We got two witnesses. And what is Yahuwah telling us here in this coda? He is revealed. 
Thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of the end gathering at the year's end. Is Shavuot the year's end? No, it's the middle of the year. The, the beginning of the year, as we just saw in this code with Yeshua, uh, the Mashiach connected to it, is Abib. And that's when we start counting around Passover time. This is all dealing with, with grains. First is barley. The, the feast that celebrates the barley in gathering is Passover. The feast that celebrates the in gathering of wheat is Shavuot. The feast that celebrates the end of the end gathering at the year's end. Any guesses? It's called Sukkot. At Sukkot time, all of the harvest is complete. The grapes, the olives, all the wheat's been cut. Everything's been processed. We are now celebrating the whole year at Sukkot time. This is how Yahuwah's feasts are laid out. And by the way, that day of Shukot, uh, uh, Shavuot is indeed hidden because the very first one was defiled by Aaron. I believe Yahuwah obscured it. He gave us a little taste of it at the time of the, the disciples when they were in the upper room, but he, he, he still obscured it. And I believe it's because of the enemy. He did not want the enemy to know how special this day was and what he was going to do with it. Because in the, in the end times, okay, so you got a former rain and a latter rain. The latter rain is greater than the former rain. Yeshua told us you're going to do greater. He's going to pour out that spirit in that time. Knowing his calendar and knowing the times that he opens up the windows of heaven to pour out a blessing is critical. And this is why he hid it. This is why he obscured it, especially after high priest of Israel defiles the very first one you all wanted to destroy him instead he had mercy and he hid his day just like he allowed his name to be hidden his son's name to be hidden he let the devil obscure it and i believe this is how we got Pat, uh, pentecost instead of doing like the jews were doing and counting elmers but ironically the uh woke Hebrews are doing it, and it's not a biblical concept. It comes from the Talmud. The Christians weren't going to do that. So what do they do? They count 15. We call it Pentecost. And from that point on, that day has been obscured. I don't mean to get off on a rant on that, but that's where the text has taken us. When he is revealed is the access term. Look at what it says there. Thrice in one year. All your men, ch uh, children, appear before Yahuwah Elohim, the Elohim of Israel. For I will cast out all nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land. And when thou shalt go up to appear before Yahuwah thy Elohim thrice in one year. Those three holidays that I just mentioned that are very important are, are the seasons. Passover time, you have a couple of feasts, one, two, three. Then you got Shavuot and then... At the end of the year, one, two, three, again, ending with Sukkot, all dealing with, with agriculture, but also the Messiah. There's, there's, there's a duality there with this teaching. <clears throat> okay, this is why he's revealed in this, right? You guys, I'm telling you, it's very important. Very important that we get in unity and we get on the same page of music with this. And I believe it's it's all in the, in the sync of who is getting us in sync. And by the way, that's what the solar lunar um, observance is. All of nature is in sync. All of nature, even the waves, even the ocean. This has got tides all dictated by the moon. Did you know that your body consists of 70% water? You know, the moon has an effect on water. You probably feel, you know, weird during full moon times, right? You ever put two and two together? The moon has an effect on the earth. It's part of the clock. It's part of this rhythm. And we have been out of sync keeping this seven-day continuous cycle, thinking uh, it, it's from creation. It is not. The, the word Sabbath does not appear in Genesis. Nowhere. It, the first time you see Sabbath appear is in Exodus 16, when you gives us the Sabbath. And... The days that it starts, 
because the 16th day of the month is the first day of the work week, which means the first Shabbat was the 20th, uh, 22nd day. If you look forwards and backwards, that pattern that it sets, it gives you the days of the, of the, of the Shabbat. And that is what nature is synced to. It just so happens that, yeah, the pagans got synced to it too. They often mimic uh, what Yahuwah does that has no bearing on Yahuwah. Mind you, the clock didn't come from Babylon. The clock came from the father. Babylon may have misused it as other nations, but has no bearing on observing the clock. That needed to be set. So what are some of the other? Uh, that's what's there in the plain text about the wheat harvest directly connected to what we were seeing there um, in the code. Uh, and, let's see. What's this one? Um, the Hidden Shabbat. Hidden Shabbat is another that I've been working on. And I'm going to expand on these a little further for the sake of time in my Shabbat uh, teaching that I do, which is coming up for those that are observing as we do or with, the, with that count. And that's July 17th at the new moon. Excuse me. Yeah. July 17th is the new moon. 16th. 17th around that area, that's when Shavuot is, according to the count. All right. So it's a hidden day. I can see this here. The hidden Shabbat, also connected to a day of distress. The very first one was a day of distress for Yahuwah. I believe in the end times, it's going to play a role of, of destruction, maybe even con connected to what happens with Nibiru leading up to the second coming of Yeshua. Um, but make no mistake about it, it's a day of distress. And uh, when people figure out that we've been defiling his days, keeping pagan days and keeping false church days, that might cause some distress. It is connected to the word Shavuot that's in the text itself at a small skip. Uh, talking about the blessing, the barit of the chodesh, the blessing of the of the new month. Right there, rosh chodesh, which is head of the month. New moon also, it's a, it's a word, it's a synonym. So it means both things and can be used um, very broadly. Crosses that word. Also, we have the word uh, otiot here. Otiot at the bottom. And... Um, we can actually go and read the text there. But this is one that I'm still working on. So let's hold off on that. We'll read, we'll go through all that in my presentation on Shavuot, because that's what it deals with. Um, and, and why I'm coming to the conclusion, just like I did with the seven codes I put out on, on the calendar, that I'm I'm confident that I'm telling you the truth about this day called Shavuot. It is not the same as what the Christians call Pentecost. It can't be. Uh, if you look at lo this logically, and, and the two witnesses that I brought, you can't have wheat and new wine in 50 days. It's not happening. And so what happens? What, well, they gave us a fake, just like they did with this Jesus Christ and Lord and God with the Father and the Son's name. They gave us a fake. Why? Because there's power in the real. There's power in it. If the Bible says that he opens up his windows of heaven and pours out blessings on his appointed times, what do you think the enemy is going to do to you? He's going to have you so confused on what the real feasts are. And my gosh, there are five different ways to observe the Hebrew feasts right now. There are people that believe the new moon is the full moon based on a mistranslation by King James and the word cassette, which means concealed. It doesn't mean concealed in light. It means concealed in darkness. A concealed moon is a moon you cannot see. Why is King James using the word and, and twisting it to mean concealed in light? <clears throat> it's a faint. It's a faint. So the case is building. The evidence is building against, uh, and I don't mean to get on the soapbox when, when you hear and imply to people that, that you're on the same Calendar is me, uh, Scott. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I know you're still looking at that and, and, and you know coming to a conclusion, but there's lots of people out there 
and I'm getting overwhelmed with messages about it. I'm sorry that I can't keep up with it. If I haven't answered your, your email or your, your message, it's probably because I can't get to it. But I hear you. I hear you from afar. And uh, you always put it on my heart to take a look at these things. It's critical. So what have we looked at? We've looked at, uh, let's go back to the Namir. I never did read the text on the Namir. We just kind of rolled through and went on the other, on, on the other uh, codes. But let's go back to the Namir table. And read the text there and kind of get an understanding how this came about, how this term came about to be used so much in Judaism. Um, just think back a few years ago, I was trying to figure out why this word was in there. What, what, what a pagan, a pagan word it wasn't a pagan. It's actually, it's actually Judah that's, that's coining this. Um, According to, uh, you know, according to the text. So we're going to take it back to 39. Which is the, the, the one that the rabbis are looking at. When I had a class, we were looking at the nine, which is codes of Yahuwah is the. Uh, is the access term here. All right, so let's read the text, and then we'll close with that, and uh, we'll, we'll keep you guys <laughs> too much wrong, because I can I can ramble. But we want people to watch this and share. Please share, you guys. All right, let's start at uh, verse 12. And Balaam said unto Balak, speak, speak I not also unto thy messengers which thou hast sent unto me. If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of Yahuwah to do neither good nor bad of my own. But what Yahuwah has said, that will I speak. And now behold, I go unto my people, come therefore, and I will advertise unto thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. And he took up this parable. And Balaam, the son of Beor, had said, a man whose eyes are open, has said, he had said, which heard the words of Yahuwah and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance. But having his eyes open, that sounds like a mystical experience. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of the out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheath. Now, there's it, Balak is uh, Balaam is speaking something on the surface here. It's making reference to a star. I believe it's it's a reference to the Maserat, but it implies that there's going to be something that comes and smites the corners of Moab and destroys all the children of Sheth. And it goes on to talk about um, Edom shall be a possession. Sheer shall also be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And then we see Amalek here, which is traditionally the enemy of the Most High. So this happens at a cataclysmic time, I believe, connected to the return of Yeshua. We're going to see some kind of star, some kind of planetary thing, that plasma discharge, galactic lightning. I believe this is what splits the mountain, right? Which is Yahuwah that splits the mountain. It's not Yeshua, that, you guys. The, the text says yod heh chapter 13, 14, 13 or 14 in, in Zephaniah, Zechariah. When he steps on the Mount of Olives, that's yod heh vav -Heh. Yeshua catches us up in the air. Just as we saw him go, is he coming again, right? 
That's the second coming. And if you want to call it a rapture, there you go. But it happens after all of this cataclysm. And we endure until it. But the dead, up until to this point, rise up, up at, at that time, I believe, at, at the time of his arrival. So uh, that's what I got for right now for um, what I'm going to share in codes. I'll share the rest when um, when I do the teaching on Shavuot here in a couple of days. And uh, we'll, we'll look at some more codes then. Brother, you got anything you want to say before we close out? Um, no, I, um, I appreciate you having me on. I, there's an incredible amount of detail in that in that table, that Iberia table. A Where lot. it appears, it's just incredible. It was yeah. amazing the way he hides things for us to find. You know, he says that, that, it, you know, it's his honor to hide things. It's an honor for kings to find it. And so he put us here to do that. And so good job, brother. It's good to see you back. Uh, you as well, it, brother. You as well. And I don't mind you uh, going on about the calendar. You know, I just think it's great that we can have um, different positions and and still be able to get along. And I, I think, you know, that's something that um, people should consider, you know. Yeah. I, you know, I so I, let me just say this. Why, why are you bringing that point up? I don't try to be contentious. I don't hate nobody right. because of the calendars that they're on. I just happen to know. And I look at it as, as finding some some treasure and wanting to share with people. What you was revealed to me about that day, that when we get into unity and when we get into that one mind and one accord thing in worship and meeting on his appointed days, something special is going to happen then. And it's going to happen to to the, the Hebrew roots people, not the whole world and not even the Christians, you guys. It's not going to happen. There's so much in heresy and, and, and abominations in all of the churches. Not just the Catholic Church, the Protestants too. Every single one of them have, have loads of doctrinal error. And they're not calling on the name. And even though they're, the name is readily available with the internet, and everybody's heard the name, yet they reject it. Watch who, watch, watch who the ones who come to him. Just like he says in Matthew 7, who say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do? Watch who that is. It's not going to be the Hebrews. Those are going to be Christians. You watch. All right. Yeah, that's how I see it, man. I love you, brother. Um, love you too, brother. Yeah, let's get together and do this again. Uh, people have been asking for it. I showed you that picture today on my phone. Somebody sent me a picture. Yeah. Of me and you doing the last time we met. And they were like, hey, look what my kid's doing. And it was a picture of his kid watching me and you. I don't know if it's going to pick it up or not. Yeah, there we go. It's a picture of me and you yeah, on the TV. Uh, isn't that it something? Of, it was one of the times we were met last time. That's interesting how that came in. And then, and then, lo and behold, here we are. That's what I told later. him. I, I, told, I texted him. I said, look, I'm supposed to be meeting with Scott in just a little bit to do a, a video. But, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, All right, man. I love you, brother. We'll, uh, you, we'll brother. do this again. Shalom, okay. everybody. We'll see you in the Shalom. next video. All right.